Good evening. It is 11.11 .11 p.m. January 4th, 2020. I hope you had a good Christmas and New Year's. I need to make a couple of corrections and clarifications here. We were talking about Ian and Gaian last time. And the fact that the Gaian is all bound up in masonry. Now, when we talk about masonry, we're not talking about the guys down at the local lodge or the mobile nobles and their fezes running around on their little motorcycles in the parade or the good guys who bring in the shrine circus. It's not who we're talking about. It's not what we're talking about. But I wanted to say something here. We're talking about Ian. I was talking about Ian and Guyan. And I think I may have told you wrong. I don't think this is Guyan. In retrospect and thinking about it, I think I was wrong. I think it is Ian. You notice here Aldeber Aldebaran. In Arabic, that would be the follower. Al split off the Deberon means follower. However, in Hebrew, no vowels, right? D, B, R, N. D, B, R, N. D, B, R, and the letter N. I'm not sure how it works in Arabic. I'll have to look into it. But D, B, R in Hebrew is Debra. The B, the Apis honey B. And that will become extremely important later. But it's also debar, which means speak, say, message, that kind of thing. Now, where are we at here? Lovett has done, and others have done, a lot of work on pyramids. And the fact that the Queen's Chamber and the King's Chamber are the gallery in between and all of that stuff is an abstract representation of the human brain. The thalamus, the hypothalamus, uh, pituitary, etc., etc. I don't even need to touch on this, but I wanted, this is so in your face and on point, I wanted to show this. This is a cross-section of half of the human brain. Now, since a picture is worth a thousand or ten thousand words, whichever, it's pretty convincing, I think, that anatomy was pretty well understood back in that age, whenever that age was, because, well, let's face it, Scalinger, or, uh, Scalinger uh, timing has some real problems. Um, we know today that the left side of the brain controls the right side of the body and the right side of the brain controls the left side of the body. We are cross-dominant that way. Um, I think since their physiology, or their anatomy, excuse me, their anatomy was so well understood, I'd be willing to bet you that their physiology was as well. A and P, you know, is anatomy and physiology, it's form and function. You know, how is it built and what does it do? See, then the ion would be the left eye and would cross-dominate and be processed in the right brain. And the right eye, Aldebaran, the follower, which is a black eye, it makes you think, doesn't it? Would be processed over here in the left side of the brain, if this were human. The left side of the brain, they are physically, anatomically mirror images, the two halves of the brain, um, the left side and the right side. 
but they are not uh, functionally equivalent. You've heard of neuroplasticity and the ability to retrain the brain when somebody has a stroke or a trauma or something. And that is true. But there are limits, especially in adults and especially as we get older. We get, you know, just harder headed. <laughs> the left side of the brain would be yang. It would be the male principle in uh, Eastern philosophy. It would be, um, oh, judgment, discrimination, uh, enumeration, um, measuring, weighing, prioritizing, sequences, um, pattern recognition in the finite sense not gross overall big picture but small picture pattern recognition that would be the yin or the yang excuse me that would be the yang there we go <laughs> probably closer but let's keep it simple um It's about duality. It's about polarities. It's about the masculine and the feminine. It's about uh, it's about the human um, condition. Now, if you arbitrarily call this white part yang, and you arbitrarily call this black part yin, yang, yang is active. Uh, masculine, priapic, um, yin is passive, receptive, um, what's a polite term for vulva? Receptacle? Receptive? My point is, is you notice that in the center of each of these is the opposite number. In the center of the masculine is a feminine. In the center of the feminine is a masculine. When you talk about alchemy, and in the 20th century, if you're going to talk about alchemy, you've got to talk about Jung, Carl Gustav Jung. He brought uh, psychology, analytical, clinical, um, Freudian psychology into the 20th century. Freud had the id, the ego, and the superego. You know, he had the I want gimme on the one side, no you should on the other side, in the, in the middle the ego, you know, trying to keep from being torn apart by two conflicting um, <clears throat> urges. But Jung brought that forward and he added uh Fulcanelli and Paracelsus and Eben and, and all of the all of the alchemists of the past and alchemy is essentially in the Arabic about the little brown-eyed girl in the Bible it would be about Christ raising Talitha um, Talitha little girl in the stars, they are stars in Polaris, um, the daughter of the assembly, Jairus, he who brings light, had a daughter named Talitha, which means little girl, and that would be your subconscious. If you were a male, if you're a male, you would bring your feminine subconscious out fully into your conscious awareness. You do this and you create the philosopher's stone. Then you take that stone and you become Christed, which is what happened when Christ was dunked in the water by John. And then he comes up and the dove descends on him. This, uh, all of the Bible, all of it, I mean, not just the Gospels, but they're all told out of sequence. 
You know, he didn't do one miracle. He didn't cast out one demon. He didn't do one damn thing miraculous until these two subconsciouses were brought out and mastered. One of them is his personal subconscious, and the next one, the dove, the uh, Yona in Hebrew, um, and in Hindi or Hindu, it would be Yoni. But now the Yoni and the dove, while they're cognate, they're not synonymous. Um, well, we're going to do esoterica. Let's do esoterica before we get to finish this and get to the logos. Um, I probably spelled Lingam wrong, needs an H. Nope. There we go. See, the Lingam and the Yoni, see it in a lot of water fountains over there. Oops, what did I do that for? That's what I wanted to do. Um, abstract representation of a male phallus penetrating a female vagina and the clitor clitoral hood right here, see. That's what that is, a lingam and a yoni. What's fascinating is the yoni in Hindu becomes the yona, the dove in Hebrew. That's not an accident. Our languages are constructs. Now, on the edges of our languages, there is creation and destruction all the time. Languages have different um, viewpoints, outlooks, ways of looking at the world. For instance, Hebrew, which is an artificially constructed language, Goddard said that it was never a spoken tongue. He said it was a scribal and liturgical tongue, like Latin. Um, but it was, they took Aramaic and then they started to mess with it and nicoot it and screw with it and, and, uh, reverse everything and invert things. It's called metathesis. And by the time they were done, they had a, uh, perfect language for obfuscation. Uh, Jay McTemmy says it seems to be designed that way and he's right. Um, you know, it's like Levetta said about uh, Arabic, the Greek is Arabic flipped. You know, Arabic is cursive and Greek is uh, uh, block script. You take the Etruscan alphabet and you flip that, just physically pick it up and flip it, and you've got the American alphabet. It's just wild. These the Hebrew, the very concrete language. Um, they took verbs and made nouns out of them. And they described the world not by the way something looked, but by the way it worked. Greek, very abstract language, uh, a language designed for philosophy and, and uh, thinking and contemplation. And that's borne out, you know, by all of, by just history. Um, uh, English, um, we take nouns and make verbs out of them. One that springs to mind is the word trigger. Uh, until about 1920, 1930, um, a trigger was simply a mechanical device used to actuate another device. It was a thing. Then 1920, 1930, it starts to show up in the dictionaries, and all of a sudden it's a verb to trigger. We take nouns and make verbs, where Hebrew took verbs and made nouns. So languages are different in their philosophical outlook and their construct. But I'm guessing that they knew damn good and well, not just the anatomy, not just the anatomy of things, but that they knew the physiology as well, how things worked. So, if the right side of the brain is the holistic side, it is the big picture side, it is emotional, 
It is emotive. It is supportive. It is um, holistic. The left side of the brain, the masculine side, is um, differentiating. It is uh, minutia sorting. It is enumerating. It is judging. It is discernment. It is logic. Logic, Spock. Logic. Bones, bones. Same. And in between, you got Kirk right in the middle, right? So that brings us logic, brings us into the Greek, the logos, and what the scribes did. Now, I want to get this right. How did he put that? There it is. Philip K. Dick was a modern Gnostic science fiction writer, very prolific. Blade Runner, Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep, Minority Report, lots of things. And he raised Talitha. If you study the man, it's obvious that's what happened. The basic tool for the manipulation of reality is the manipulation of words. If you can control the meaning of words, you can control the people who must use the words. Now, there was never anything more true spoken than that. This is what the scribes did back in those days. They turned thing or things around. We'll do that another time. Let's just get into the logos now. We're going into the Greek. There are two basic types of logical argument, inductive and deductive, um, from the specific to the general and from the general to the specific. But see, this is what they're doing. They made the logos, the word, they made it an abstract argument. They made faith about persuasion. Now, persuasion is the beginning of faith. To be persuaded by what you perceive and feel and intuitively know is the beginning of faith, but it's not the whole of faith. It's, 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 it's a deconstruction of faith and a focusing on like the first third of it. It's using that male logic where you need that feminine capacity to see the whole big picture. See, from Aristotle, the most important means of persuasion was logos. For Plato, it was only the only legitimate one. It can simply mean word, or it can mean the underlying point that makes sense or meaning behind everything else. That's closer to the truth of what the word is. Or it can mean logic, ration, rational thinking. See, that's what's happened to mankind, is we've been stuck in our left logical masculine brain now, since the age of Taurus. And take a good hard look at the world around you. How's that working out? Let me ask you this as just a thought question. How many women do you imagine were standing at the chalkboard in Los Alamos or working on heavy water in Germany in the 1940s, dreaming up a bigger, better way to kill millions of people in an efficient military industrial manner at the push of a button. How many women do you think were involved? Well, they were involved. They were answering the phones. They were typing the letters. They were raising the children. They were cooking the meals, sweeping the floors. They were supporting the masculine. This is what the feminine does. This is what 
Balaam's donkey said to him, Why have you beaten me? Don't I always take you where you want to go? See, we're talking about, in general, the masculine and the feminine, but we're also talking about the psychology within your brain, within your mind. Okay? And we're applying it to the logos, the word. Why is it the word? Because they were scribes. How can you tell when a scribe is lying? His pen is moving. It's an overgeneralization, but not too far. Rational thinking. Well, it's the beginning. You can get there from rational thinking, but you can't get all the way there. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was fully God. The Word was with God in the beginning. All things were created by Him, and apart from Him, not one thing was created that has been created. In Him was life, and the life was the light of mankind, and the light shines on in the darkness, but the darkness has not mastered it. Now, this is a video from oh, a year and a half ago. Scott McQuaid. He's a exegetist, or does exegesis, easier for me to say. He strips biblical language down. But he does non-hermeneutical exegesis, um, meaning he does not follow hermeneutics, because he understands, like Jay McKemming, like Goddard, like Levette, like me, that these languages are diddle-fucked with. They just are and they've been obfuscated and twisted and perverted. So he does not follow, follow Hermes, hermeneutics. If you follow Hermes blindly, hello ditch. You're no better off following Hermes blindly than you are following any of these quote unquote good shepherds. You gotta be thinking for yourself. Now, in the interest of full disclosure, I was a member of this man's website for better part of a year. It was a two-tier website. Could barely afford the low tier. It was 25 and 50 at that time a month. And t money got tough and I had to quit. But I got to read all of his works he'd written up to that time. And that's what I wanted. He had them there in PDF. And it was worth it for me to read those works. I can't say that I agree with everything he said. But I can't say that he's wrong either. You know, I'm open to his argument. But there are some things we do agree on. Now, listen up here. I'm going to play you just a minute or, or two of this. Hopefully I don't get a strike for it, but it's important. And it's Forbidden Knowledge News. Very good channel, by the way. It is truly, truly emphasizing the fact that this is true. Truly, truly. I tell you, the day is coming and is even now. Okay, that he who hears my voice, the, or the, excuse me, that the dead will hear my voice and be raised to life. And the verse before that, he actually said that if we hear his voice and uh, believe in the one who sent me, who sent him, that we will not be, uh, that we will not enter condemnation, which means judgment, and we will be raised to eternal life. That's it. Believe in the Father. Listen to what A.C. said about following him, you know, obeying him, loving your neighbor as yourself, loving the Father, and listening to his voice. And now I'm going to tell you a secret, another secret, okay? And I don't say that, you know, as if, wow, I've got a secret to tell you. I'm saying it because there's not a pastor alive who knows what I'm about to tell you and your listeners. And it's important because when he said that it, that you need to listen to his voice and hear his word, those two words mean the same thing, literally. Because when you take the word word back to the Aramaic and you transliterate it into the cuneiform, it means exactly the same thing as the word voice. That word literally means tone. Okay? That is the first and primary definition of the word word. It's not logos. 
It's not a reference to listening to Jesus. Okay, it's important to listen to what he tells us to do, but that is a secondary definition. The word word and the word voice literally mean the same thing. It means tone. Tone. So, what alchemical astrologer of our acquaintance has been saying for the better part of ten years? You have to pull the sword from the stone and the word from the tones. I couldn't figure out for the longest time why we're hearing these tones. Mandela effect is, just Google it, Mandela effect and tinnitus, take your pick. Uh, tones. 2015 or 2016, I woke up one morning. It was 4.44 a.m., according to the blinking red thing. And tone in my ear. I don't hear it as often now as I did. And occasionally I hear a really ugly one when I'm really pissed off. And I've been pissed off a lot. That's why I don't make more videos. Um, just don't need to spread that kind of poison. Been riding that red horse for a while. The more I learn and understand, the madder I get. Um, just at how badly we've been abused. But it is what it is. It's the tones. It sounds, for all the world, like a tuning fork. But it's been a while since I heard because, well, Peter cuts off Malchus's ear, you know, Malchus, M-L-K, back into the Hebrew king. Uh, I don't even want to get started on that. I'll just get pissed off again. But uh, And I couldn't figure out why is there water in an air sign? <laughs> it's not water. It's a wave. And it's theory apophysis. Ken Wheeler says a wave isn't something something is. A wave is something something else does. See? It's the tone, the frequency, the vibration of creation is what it is. That's the word. That's the logos. And when it's made man, it becomes Christ, the anointed one, the Messiah. This rising and dying God man, though, Understand this. This is a very old meme. This is a very old um, idea, story. He was called Tammuz in Babylon, where he, and the Maenads who were wailing, they'd be Maenads in Greek, who were wailing outside the temple, get Yahweh's all pissed off. So you know Yahweh isn't the guy. In uh, Egypt, it was Osiris and Horus and Isis, uh, father, mother, son, the Trinity. Um, then into uh, later Egypt, when Ptolemy, the same way the Flavians helped build Christianity with their scribes and their financing and everything, uh, Ptolemy did the same thing before that in Egypt, when the Greeks took over Egypt, and he conflated Egyptian Apis B bull worship with uh, the, the Greek pantheon of Zeus, and you got Serapis Crestus. And then for the first couple hundred years of Christianity, there was considerable confusion about whether they were Christians or Christians. Were they Christians from Egypt with Serapis Crestus, or were they Christians from Greece? with Jesus Christ. It, fascinating history. I'll have to do a, a video on that, just that. You can do two hours on it, not even barely, barely do it justice. But my point is, it's the tones of creation. And all of this, all of it, all of it, everybody's starting to beat the same drug, drum of drug, the same drum of unity consciousness is happening all on schedule. 
It's happening all on schedule. You got to understand that. As Goddard called this place a play, I call it a program, but whatever you call it, it's happening on schedule. It's happening the way it's supposed to, how it's supposed to, and all the worry and fretting and anger in the world isn't going to help anything. You know, um, just become a passerby, as it says in the Nag Hammadi. I listened to uh, Derek Bros from time to time, and he said something I thought was exceptionally brilliant one day, and it stood me in good stead. My takeaway from it, and if I'm misquoting, I'm sorry, but he said, we like to think that in our conscious choices and actions, our character is revealed, but that's not true. It's in our reactions that that's where our character is. When I get angry and I fly off the handle, I get pissed off about things a lot. Um, you know, it says a lot about my character. And that's what we've got to do now. We've got to work on our character. If you want to take it away from the religious angle and just look at it from a, 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 a left brain physical angle, it's character building. It's coming and it's coming fast. From a Jungian perspective, the subconscious is about to be made conscious whether we are ready for it or not. When that blue star Hopi Kachina that everybody says is coming, and we've all seen, at least, well, not all of us, I suppose, but I sure as hell have, with my little piece of shit camera phone, um, been able to take pictures of it. It's gonna, it's coming. And when Maya, that dancing, spinning maiden, you know, that uh, in the uh, My Pet Goat 2, that spinning dancer, when those masks come off and we find out who we really are and how many lives we've lived here and how many sins, how much pain and sorrow we're responsible for. Um, it, it, the stone the builders rejected is going to crush people. It's going to set the stage for a new creation right on schedule. But it's going to hurt. Growth always hurts. And it's going to be hard. It's going to be hard in every single way you can imagine. Psychically, emotionally, physically. It's going to be hard, difficult. And there will be trials and tribulations galore. Unless, God willing, I'm wrong. There is absolutely nothing in the fucking world that would make me happier than to be absolutely wrong. But when I look around at the world we've made, I can't honestly say the iniquity of the Amorites is complete. Can you? When you look around at what we've done and the things we get angry about and the pissing and moaning and arguments on message boards and social media platforms about nothing while kids starve and die from bombs and bullets and then all the other things we do to children it's just how anyone could say that This big blackboard wash won't happen. I don't know. I don't know. This world needs a good scrubbing. In my view, and God willing, I'm wrong. I would love to be wrong. But my point is this. It's in your reactions. So you have to stand away from your reactions. You have to become a watcher of your reactions. 
Rose is always saying, watch your tongue. Watch your tongue. Because it's tones. See, it's phonetic tones. We create the reality around us with our mouths, with what we say. And we'll talk more about how exactly that's supposed to work. Um, some of it's counterintuitive, I thought, but whatever. It's so important to be forgiving. You know, forgiving other people is relatively easy, and I've hated people for 50 years. I hated people in my family for 50 years because of what was done to me. And uh, it took me that long to get over it. And when I was trying to get over it, see, I was trying to get over it. Most people aren't trying to get over anything. They just slap a Band-Aid on it and they don't look at it. And when they do look at it, well, they start drinking or take Valium or whatever they do distract themselves with work or sex or whatever distraction floats their boat. But we've got to be working on ourselves because time is getting really short. And we need to be really loving and really forgiving. It just, you can't hit that nail hard enough. We've got to be forgiving and loving because if we can't forgive others, we sure as hell can't forgive ourselves. And when the masks come off and we see everything we've done, and I've heard more than one seer, more than one mystic or visionary say the exact same thing. We're here to have experiences and to live many lives and you have played many parts. Goddard said it. You live the last life seven times before you wake up on the eighth when you're circumcised. Some of us are stupid and we ask for things we shouldn't ask for. And so we're racing against the clock. Christ said, to no avail, you will fail. But that's in the cards too. That's the way it's supposed to be, so... Sunny Peaches. 77 said one night one of her videos she said you have no idea she said how many times we've been here in these bodies doing this exact same thing she never talked about her process she did say she'd studied the gematria so have i but i'm sure she was fixed her cardinal probably cardinal Be good to each other. Watch what you say. Don't be a critical bastard. I see a lot of teachers on YouTube being obnoxious critical bastards. No, this one blew it, and that one's wrong, and this, that, and the other. Shut up. Shut the fuck up already. Be kind. Would it kill you to be kind? To bite your fucking tongue? And to spread a little... Niceness? Would it kill me? <laughs> oh, I'm a right bastard. Listen, be good. And we'll talk again as soon as I can. And uh, it wouldn't hurt just on general principle to um, um, lay in a few supplies. The end of the world is not going to be tomorrow or next year, but it'll be sooner than we think, and it'll come in stages, and when it starts to happen, it'll happen really fast. So, somebody else said very recently, get prepared, and it's not a bad idea. Um, just in general principle, if things go great, great. I'm not going to be a doom and gloomer, but 
if things shape up the way I think they're gonna, it's important that we at least be able to feel we've done something. So, be kind, be loving, be good. Don't be a dick. We'll talk to you later.